So here I have analytics.livebay.com. Okay. As I'm, if I sign in, I'm already signed in. Okay, sign it. So I see the projects that I can that belong to me that my user are allowed allowed to see. So it's easy. I just pick up the project that I want to to talk about. Okay. So here we are start seeing how Analytics Cloud looks like. Okay. I have a a site here that is called this this one. Okay, is this site? It's a simple library DXP site as an example, and this site is connected to Library Analytics Cloud. Okay, so here we have some 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 pages, uh, a home page, then some resources, events that are going to happen, like uh, our symposium, etc. Okay, it's an example of a page that we may have, a corporate site. So here we have information for developers, and we have Analytics Cloud interconnected with that, OK? So the web itself is not relevant right now. What I want to be focused is in the, in the Analytics Cloud product. OK, so here, as you can see, the home page is very easy. We have the two key concepts there, like people and touch points. And then we have segments, individuals, pages, assets, data sources. As I was mentioning, now we don't have accounts, but we will have accounts this, this year. So we'll see uh, the sixth element there, that, that is accounts, OK? So let's start. Let's go a little bit into the product, OK? So starting from. Touch points, for instance, we can see what is uh, what, how a page looks like. We will be showing this kind of patterns ar around the, pro the product. So usually, we have like a report here with a search. We can also pick up uh, different times, like last 30 days, last, uh, last 90 days, uh, last week, etc. And the information changes if we if you if we do that, okay. And we will see here all the pages that are part of part of Analytics Cloud that are analyzed. Okay, so if a page has any visit, it's going to appear here. Okay, so for instance, I have I seen that I have one page here. Yeah, this one. Okay. So now I pick a page, and then I go to a detailed view what is happening to my page. OK, so I see how the visitors are behaving, OK? Level of engagement, number of visitors, number of views, bones rate. So the bones rate is an analytic concept, OK? It's the, those people that go into your page, and they don't do nothing. And they, they, they go outside of, the, of that page, OK? They do nothing. They, they don't interact with the page. They don't use the scroll. They don't use any, any link, et cetera. Well, that could be good or could be bad. It's something that you have to analyze. Some people try to mix both con concepts, the bones rate and the time on page, OK? Maybe a, a page with a high bones rate is not bad because People are, uh, are going into that page. They see what they want, and that's it. They have the information, and that's it. They don't have to spend many time reading. They don't have to spend mm, time clicking to go to another page, etc. Bones rate is a very interesting information, and you have to analyze uh, it considering other aspects. Okay, So here we are providing engagement, then bones rate, then time on page. You can also compare. Okay, So we have this period and the previous, previous one, OK? And everyone, you can see that you have full of information here. All of that uh, numbers can be analyzed, can be compared between the different periods. And you can pick up different periods, et cetera, and comparing, OK? By now, 
we have limited it to 90 days, but okay, we are seeing if we are going to offer more and more information as times go by, okay? Uh, so we have visitors' behavior, then views by segments, okay? So we have different segments that are coming into my page, that are using my page, and I can see how these segments behave, okay? So we have CTOs, we have healthcare, North America, different segments that I've created. I, this, these segments are not going to appear automatically. It's something that I create, we'll see later, and we see how, how is their behavior. And same thing with uh, where do they came from. So here we have different countries. They came from the United States, Canada, Spain, Brazil, etc. Operating system, web browser, in the last 90 days, again, the same thing, same patterns, okay? We'll find the same. Well, it's good information that we are seeing that, well, Chrome, then if someone is using a, a mobile, etc. okay? Here we can see. And here, the last thing that we are giving to you is the assets that are on the page. And I can go from here, I can go to this specific asset, and have a look, have a deeper look, as we were mentioning before, okay? But I, I will show you uh, that in the assets menu. But everything's connected always. If I see a page, I can click, I will, I will go to the page uh, report. If I see an asset, I can click, etc. or a segment. We also have this kind of filter, okay? So I can filter by device, location, okay? See what happens. Uh, I don't know if I filter every, all this information, so now it's only the United States, okay? So the report changed, and I can see here that I have a, a filter, and I can, of course, delete it and be in the, in the same situation that I was before. And we also have the path, okay? Well, this page has, it's not, Okay, it has not too much information. It, here we have some users, sometimes we click on it, et cetera, so the, the information is not accurate. But well, we see that this specific page has some, some, some starting points, some starting paths, and people arrive to this page using mostly this page on the top, okay? That, that's it or this one, this other one, et cetera, how they arrive to the page, and the top assets that we have on each page. So in this page, we have this asset. In this one, we have these other assets. Uh, I can click on them, et cetera, okay? And you can go to assets from here, from here, et cetera, okay? So this is a, a very good report because in the end, we get to know how people arrive, reach, reach our page. Okay, so moving now to, to assets. Remember that we have blogs, documents and media, forms, and also web content, okay? So depending on the, on the content itself, on the type of content, we will see different types of information. For instance, for a web content, we have number of views, how are the segments, again, locations, operating systems, in which asset this, in which pages does this asset appear, okay? This is good information, so I can again analyze the whole page, what's happening with my asset in, my, in that page. And I was, uh, as I was mentioning, depending on the type of asset, we can have more detailed information. So, Following the example with our uh, symposium form, okay, we have like a, a specific information for that kind of, of asset. So here we can see submission, number of views, percentage of abandonment, completion time. So we don't have too much statistics here, but again, uh, how is the completion time? If, for the users that complete the form, how much time do they spend? How is the average time? Okay, here we are seeing always average, average, average. Okay, we have many, many data and we are accumulating it and we are uh, showing it in that way. Again, segments, uh, locations, technology, etc. 
and what I was mentioning before in the with the slides. Okay, so we have this concrete, this specific form, and we can analyze how this form is is behaving. Okay. So we have different fields here. How many interactions do we have in that field? What is the percentage of abandonment? How many time the people spend on that specific? And how many times people come back and do something, okay? So they, they, did, they put the first name, but then they went to last name, but they, they came again to first name and corrected something, okay? So this is something differential, a differential thing that we have from with library analytics cloud without doing nothing. I'm just saying, hey, your library DSP is now connected to library analytics cloud, and you have this kind of information, detailed, detailed information that you have without programming. Well, of course, everyone knows, I don't know, uh, Google Analytics. For that, you have to use Google Tag Manager, you have to call IT, create complex rules, etc. So here you have very good information without doing almost nothing, okay? So let's move now to people. The second key concept is people, and we have here segments, individuals, and remember that we will have this year accounts, okay? So let's see, um, a specific segment, for instance. Okay, so if I go to segments, I will see the segments that I have created, and I will see information for that segments in my platform, okay, F related to my, to my site. So now, for instance, I can go to here, to developers, and I can see how this segment is evolving, how it's uh, acting in my platform, okay? So I see, First of all, I see the membership. Here I see which, is, which are the members of that segment, when, when they became members of that segment. Some of them could be the, the first date that I create that segment, okay, nothing more. Uh, then I see interests. Here we start speaking about that uh, business intelligence that I was talking about. Also with the engagement in the, in the page. Remember that we had that engagement level. This is also business intelligence there with many, many concepts like scroll, scroll velocity, number of clicks, uh, bounce rate, etc. Everything mixed and then we have that kind of engagement, okay? But here we have that, interest and distributions. If you see on top I have interest and distributions so I can see it here in like a summary, but I can go further, okay? So if I click on interests, then I will see those interests. So from all the pages that people that belong to this segment, they are navigating, they are seeing, they are, they are consulting, we see that the more searches, the more topics that they are looking for is technical, new life, Bajax, advanced architecture, etc. And I can go to any of these and have again a detailed view. Okay? So in which why what are the pages that are that are related to this concrete, to this specific concept, and how is evolving that kind of that kind of metric. Okay? So we see that here this segment we have two or three views, then one and a half, then no views here, et cetera. And you see that the, that metric is evolving more or less this way, okay? So it takes, it takes into account different, different metrics. And finally, there's an evolution that you can inspect in different times, like by day, week, or month. Okay? Very interesting information and also I was mentioning the distribution. So what happens if I can offer you a breakdown in some specific properties? Here is the job title, uh, but I can also put, I don't know, country. Uh, so if I have something, yes. So I can see that people that are developers, they come from USA, also China, England, Spain, Canada, etc. 
So here, maybe, you decide to create a new segment based on that. Okay, so you decide, okay, I'm not only going to, to, to take conclusions because of the developer segment, but the developer in Spain. Okay, so a new segment that you can create uh, because of this breakdown by properties. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to show you is how you can create a segment. Okay, so I have here a segment creator. There are several ways you can choose. So first of all, we have dynamic or static. Static is you decide which people are going to belong to the segment. Maybe you know some people and you say, okay, I want an static segment uh, with my top five customers. And this is something that you know and you put it, okay. Or maybe it's a dynamic uh, segment that the one that I'm going to create right now, like a P, I don't know, people downloading, okay? And then you start creating the criteria for that segment. So you have properties or behavior, okay? Properties, as you can imagine, is just different properties that you can choose. Of course, our library DXP, the, the site that I was showing you is connected to library analytics cloud, and we have all the profiles of our of our users, and we can send them, we can send this kind of uh, properties, okay? So what is the email, what is the whatever? Uh, but I wanted to show you behavior. So for instance, we can say people that have, has downloaded any asset, okay? So I have here advanced, as soon as you start writing, the combo will change, okay? He's gonna show the top 10, and then you have to write a little bit and it will change and then it will give you some clues, okay? So for instance, I say, okay, people that has downloaded this PDF all time. A uh, good thing is that he's gonna make me a preview here so I can see that my segment has sense, okay? I see that, well, I have uh, some people there, like eight people, okay? Of course, that I can create a additional or, and, etc. But if I'm happy with it, I can create the segment. That's it, I have that segment uh, saying, okay, okay, here we have six members, I don't know why we don't have eight, <laughs> but we have some CTO, developers, etc. in the distribution, okay? We can see that distribution that we have created, that interests, etc. again, well, the interest test will happen later on, okay? Once that you create the segment, then Analytics Cloud starts analyzing the information, and in a few minutes, in more or less 30 minutes, half an hour, half an hour and an hour, you will start having data about the interest test, and, uh, but you also have data about distribution, etc. That was a segment. It was easy to create a segment, okay? Let's switch now to individuals. Okay, so with individuals, now we are going to focus on a specific person, okay? On a specific person. And we have, a, for instance, here a user that is called male, okay? And we have some statistics. So you can search for the user and you have some statistics, okay? So we can have like an overview like this, like what, which, has, which are the activities that this specific user has been doing in my website lastly, over the last 30 days, 90 days, et cetera. And I can go further and see those activities here, okay? So for instance, if I click here, you see that we do know everything about this user, okay? So we know that he arrived at our site using our homepage, then he reached, uh, he visited uh, product features, resource library, advanced architecture, etc. Finally, we don't know why, but finally he downloaded, he decided to download a PDF in that advanced architecture uh, that we have, etc. So we get to know everything about that user. What is he doing? Okay. So if, if we have, I don't know, if we have a meeting with this user, this is very good information that, that, we, can, that we can use. And of course, again, the level of interest and in which segments is that user, okay? So we see here different information. 
depending on the day, etc. And uh, I was mentioning the interests and the segments that this, users, this user, specific user, belongs to. About the details, what do we have in that single customer view that we have for a user? Okay, so in this a specific page, we'll see that we have different information. Some of that information comes from the site, because when this user logged in, he registered in the site, he provided me this kind of information. But some other information comes from a CSV that I have as a data source. Okay, Remember that we can mix and have a single customer view of people. So this is here in my settings. We can see that I have two data sources, the website itself, of course, and then some CSVs. And I'm saying uh, easily to Library DXP Cloud that this specific column is going to be this specific field matching okay, in Library Analytics Cloud, et cetera. Uh, Finally, I, I wanted to show you also uh, ah okay so we we also have remember here this kind of help within the product okay so you can write things like uh, what's that level of engagement We're going to try offering you some, some, some pages here. And if I click, we will open the website that I was mentioning, OK? Help.library.com. That is full of information with many, many information. Better explain that I'm explaining it. So <laughs> if you start reading this, you will gain many information about, about this. So how is Path analytics working, OK? So I can click on it, and he will explain me what are the metrics, the important metrics that we have here. For instance, these others is not like we are not, we don't know what's that. No, no, others is we are only showing you the top three, and then in others, there are the, the, the rest of the pages, OK? It's not, it's not that we don't want to, to tell nothing about it. And finally, you can, you will have a different projects. I can switch to the different projects that I have. OK. I have another one here. So I switch, and I start having those analytics, those metrics, but in a different project. And I can get and configure my data sources, et cetera. OK, so here is just an example. But you will see how easy it is to configure contacts or analytics. For every data source, if we have library DXP, you can configure contacts and analytics. If you have CSV, you will only configure contacts. If we have Salesforce, then we, all, we will configure contacts, etc., depending on the, on, the, on the data source. Okay? For contacts, we can easily see that we can decide what do we want to, to synchronize, and then Field by field, just choose, just mapping, OK? So here is Library DXP, the client. And here is Library DXP Cloud, the server, our software as a service. Usually, he guesses. So address, address, yes, perfect. Usually, he guesses. But of course, you can, you can change it. Or even you can create a new field. So if you have a CSV, a, a custom field, et cetera, you will, be ready, you will be ready to connect it here. And then the information will have this kind of, the profile will have this kind of field, OK? So that's it. If there's any demanda. Domanda. So domande, OK. If I'm not wrong, you support not to If I'm not wrong, you support not only <laughs> Yeah, so our the collector is agnostic in us in order to so you can use Drupal, WordPress, whatever. It's not available right now, but it will be at the end of the year. So 
For that, what are we using? It's like JavaScript, okay? You will have to, to inject uh, JavaScript in your site, in your Drupal, in your WordPress, etc., and we will start collecting information. We will know that you have a form there. It's more or less easy, HTML, form, etc., and we'll see what information we, we will provide you without coding, okay? Without taking care about uh, these tag, tags, etc. But of course, we will provide a way for you to create tags and then send more accurate information into Library Analytics Cloud. Altre domande? Una ce l'ho io. Uh, I see a project. But a project is a one project, one site, or inside the project mm -hmm. we have the project. Can we have yeah, the project is the is the whole library instance that you have. But but when you are configuring, you can decide which sites are gonna be connected. Okay, so you can go to to data sources again, and as soon as you configure analytics, you will decide what are the sites that are gonna be connected uh, within your library instance. Okay, so you decide which ones. Perfect. Altre domande? Allora. Grazie Rafa, grazie. Un applauso. Grazie.